Hey, what's going on? It's uh, Jave and Andy from Andy. Two Dudes Reviews and Josh hey, Katz, Josh. live in the flesh. How the heck are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? We're, we're doing awesome. I got to say, the last time we saw each other was uh, kind of a weird, uh, it was a Skype interview online that you did from home. You still had like your homemade lighting rig in the background, which was kind of funny. I still had dark hair, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a trip. Well, congratulations on everything. I mean, you know, Ghost, just such an immediate hit. Tell me about the writing of that. And I know when we talked the last time, I asked, do you know how big this song is going to become? And you're like, I'm ready for anything. Did you yeah. think it would become number one for as no, long as it's been? I feel like, if I'm not mistaken, th that was the first interview we had done after it came out. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. I think it was the very first one. Yeah. And, uh, and we had no idea what we were in for. Yeah. We were pleasantly very cool. surprised. Yeah. Now, the, um, the Jester now climbing the charts, right? It's and brand new. It just came it out. But, uh, and that's, that's, uh, that's the song that we requested in Vegas and... You were like, oh, how do you know about that? Was that a surprise to you to hear somebody ask for that song? I, I don't remember that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, wow. I, I play a lot of gigs. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, no, it was the Happens Vegas thing in that little tiny bar with like 50 of us. The radio event in Vegas. Yeah. And you guys... You guys requested the jester like while we were on stage. You screamed at it. Yeah. Yes, after after you out. played go the ghost, we were like, wow. play the jester. And then my my real question, the other song, right? It's not on the album. Move me is in flipping credible. It's unbelievably moving. Can you tell us why that song is not on the rec the record? Because it didn't make sense to be on the record. Hmm. It was already out technically on YouTube like it was never officially released or anything like that but it was already out and put out into the world and when I put it out I made this big statement about how I would never wanted to see this song worked at radio I didn't want to treat it like a product I just thought it was a special creative bit that I wanted people to have and that was that yeah. and we talked about it maybe going on the record when we were coming up with it but also it like lyrically didn't make sense there was a there's a real theme happening with this album and it, it didn't belong fair enough to see do you see maybe that song coming your thought process maybe changing later on down the road could be like a b-side somewhere I, you know i don't know but i just wonder i i think more people should hear it i mean or, without having to go to youtube to to, to 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 see it we have been scheming ideas for what we should do with that song because it was it's the only thing that we've ever put out like organically without any help just like got a million views it was the only thing that's that's never really happened in our yeah. careers before like all the other things are like well there's this whole machine behind this. You know, Ghost has however many million views on YouTube and streams, but that was the only thing that was just, like, purely organic. And so we don't want to just let that be... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about it. Now that it's been enough time, I'm not, like, as concerned with it. If the radio wants to play it, they can play it. I just don't want to. I just don't want it to turn into a product. That's right. All. Yeah. 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 It would be really well, cool enough. if it was organic and people just started picking it up. But right. I think there's still plenty of life and plenty of music on OK, I'm sick to of have course. three, four, five singles down the road. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I wasn't taking away from that, by the way. Sure. I just I, that's a beautiful song and I love it. And hopefully you'll play it tonight. I'm curious what changed <laughs> between uh, between the last record that you did and then Big Machine and then doing this new thing because it seemed like you kind of stepped up to the plate and then shit got we weird and then you stepped back, recomposed, and then came back again. Tell me about that. What changed? What's different? Are you saying between the EP and the, and the album? Yeah. Uh, we were just a completely different band. We were a lot younger. Uh, and the songs on that EP were just like a compilation of songs that we had written up until that point. Yeah. And that's sort of what it was. And and once once the band started doing better and we were receiving all this validation and there were certain little bits of like lyrical content from that and from Move Me and from other other things that we were like starting to put out and show people, they were like, well, this is, you have something really special. And then we just sort of ran with that. And, and you know, we yeah, we moved to Big Machine and we had all of these opportunities. We're like, well, let's really be something special. Let's not just be another rock band with cool riffs. Like, let's really put effort into into making something that's that people are gonna like. That's gonna turn people's heads. People to me, the album, out. the the new album comes off a bit controversial. Just you, you deal with really raw stuff that might evoke some emotion from some people. Everything from suicide to PETA to you know PETA. government and you know <laughs> and f the establishment, the current establishment, you know, yeah. to the internet and the dangers of that. 
Um, tell me about your home life a little bit and, gro- <laughs> and, and, and growing up. Do you have a better relationship with your mom or your dad? I don't have the greatest. Re- I'm, I've been working on my relationships with both of my parents. Not nothing against them, but I've just, you know, everybody has their own personal issues with their family, and that's that. And um, no, my home life. It's not like my home life was that crazy. It's that I'm just I'm very observational with with the world and I care a lot about morals and understanding what's moral and what's not and this record just ended up being such a 2018 because that's when it was written technically but 2018 2019 this generation observational creative piece and so it's about all of these things that are like constantly uh, you know in our faces that the internet stuff and so many different things and political things and whatever else and they're just like some of it is opinionated and some of it isn't some of it's talking about these things, but with no opinion from a completely neutral perspective, just yeah. to get people to think, you know, think about this stuff in different ways. So when you when you write a song like Ghost, there's that's not personal experience, or is that well, from an experience of someone you know or your own personal experience? Ghost is different. Like songs like Ghost and Twenty Four and X and X, like those songs are a very specific thing that were that are personal to me. Um, the rest of the album is more what I'm referring to as like the observational, current thing. Yeah, I, I just I I have a panic disorder, and like I, I admit it. Okay, I'm sick. That's that's <laughs> yeah. kind of what that's about. It's like I have this issue. Um, I'm on meds for it. I've been on meds for it, and I've gone through periods where I didn't have meds, and I was an absolute train wreck, and I didn't want to do music anymore, and I didn't want to live anymore, and I've just had all of these feelings and these fears and experiences, and I, I wrote about them. Thank you for sharing those. Yeah. Uh, do you find it more difficult? doing stuff like this in a small intimate situation than being up on stage in front of 10,000 people or being in front of the big crowd is that what gives you more of that angst and panic it depends on the day honestly because yeah, I can do a stage announcement at something like this and be totally cool with yeah. it but talking in a conference room to 10 people just freaks me the hell out yeah I used to hate all of it yeah. I, I used to have a hard time doing anything like even having a conversation with a person mm. with a friend who I haven't talked to in a while who I don't feel like totally comfortable with I might start to get anxious, like start sweating and freaking out and have to exit the situation. Um, so it's like that feeling is the same across the board. I, I've just been getting better progressively, like as a whole. And so I, it's hard for me to distinguish if this is more difficult than that because I'm just doing better in general. And that's, that's quite a remarkable dichotomy to have this issue, whatever, but to choose music as a career. When did, when did, I mean, was that, was it always your plan to be a musician? I had the plans of being a musician before I had the issues. Huh. So wow. I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up with these problems. That's I, crazy. I, they hit me at like 17, 18. Okay. 19, 20. Were you a popular guy in school? So popular. Are you yeah. serious? No, dead okay. serious. Yeah. Like very popular. I was homecoming prince. <laughs> I was. Nice. I was kind of That's a dick, awesome. but yeah. like in in the most of the popular guys are. Yeah. Um. I'm. I think I'm less of a. No, I'm still kind of a dick. I don't know. Um. <laughs> I'm more conscious about it now. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, I was, and then I got out of high school and realized I wasn't the shit. Yeah. And real life was big and scary, and I then I started having these these anxious fits, and then uh, and then that went away, went away for years, and it came back again years ago or something wow. four years ago yeah, yeah so, so say uh your voice is shot tomorrow or you lose your musical voice aptitude is shot today, by the way. what 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 would you be doing if it wasn't for music uh the building things okay yeah yeah because you b- built be, most of the stage and, and most of your yeah. setup out on going I would, on the road, I, yeah. anything creative honestly i would be doing something creative like i was just thinking about this because i'm recently we ordered all of these all of these new lighting pieces from like this Chinese manufacturer that I've been bartering with back and forth. It's been a whole thing. It's been really fun. Um, but I could fully be the guy wearing all black behind the scenes, like setting up the stage and doing the sound, like doing all of that stuff and not be the performer. And I would be just, just as happy. It's interesting. You know, uh, you know, Johnny from nothing more, you guys were out on tour with them for a yeah. long time. The last time they were here in Reno, Johnny is a big fan of, you know, building stuff. And he yeah. actually built a soundproof area to make a studio in the bus and I think three or four days later, the uh, fire marshal told him, you know, you got to rip that shit out. Why was the fire marshal I, on his bus? Good question, but I know he got some heat for it. He spent well, an that's entire... That's the story they told us. Was well, that the fire marshal said you got to take that door down. Yeah, right? yeah. Or maybe the bus company or it was right. against the regulations mm-hmm. or something. you got to be careful with these things. Well, we Anyways. wouldn't do that anyway because we can't really ride on tour. We're not good at it. Yeah. 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 I, tried. I actually tried the other night. It was a big failure. Yeah. 
Is uh, Shine Down Tour the biggest, uh, you know, tour that you have been on as far Probably, as audience? Yeah, and I, if you if you don't count festivals, yeah, because we've done the festival circuit where those are big. But I think just supporting a band, yeah, is probably the biggest one. We've and done. then up next, headline tour. Is that going to be a lengthy tour? Well, I know yeah. I know you're playing after Shock in Sacramento, which means you won't be playing here in Reno. But God, it'd be great to see you guys doing a headline, you know, a club tour here in town because you're so great. Thank just you. at making eye contact with everybody. That's it's a real gift when you go to a show and you see a front man who makes it makes everybody in the audience feel like you're talking just to them and you have that gift it's, uh, it's a little that. freaky actually. I, I was gonna say is that conscious are you conscious of that uh, being present and being intimate with your crowd yeah yes yeah. there are moments when I might slip out of it and I have to push myself back into it because I'm like oh I'm not performing when I play a show every single night it becomes like second nature and I have to sometimes force myself to be in the moment to remember what I'm doing that there's people here watching and I'm not just like yeah. you know but it, also is there certain songs where I have to be that way yeah which is like I can't get through them unless I'm like connecting with people promise me yeah listen to that song five times and I went it's poppy it's fun you know it's good and then I listened to the lyrics and I went oh my god had to pull over the side of the road and get a tissue because oh, I was tearing up sweet. thinking about my wife and I and the message behind the song right Brilliant songwriter. I really appreciate uh, you. what you've given to the world with, That's my with, this, song the with this album. It's dynamite. I I, I, I know you have a uh, lot of other stuff going on, so I want to try and wrap this up. But sure. I think, did you say you had a question about musicals? Because we talked about your love of musicals. Did you have some question that was relating around that? Musicals? Yeah. No, it wasn't musicals. It was, that was somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I musicals. remember we talked about uh, your love of, uh, of musicals. Yeah. Okay, you're yeah. going to do a cover song on the next record. It's going to be a piece from a musical. What's it going to be? <laughs> Not like this is going to happen, but just um, spitballing. Something from Rent. Okay. Yeah. All right. Life Support from Rent. Life yeah. Support. What was the song Tits and Ass? That's the only one that I remember. Was that from a chorus line? Tits and ass. Tits. It could have been from Chicago or I think it was line. a chorus line. Could have been That would Chicago be a good one to cover, line. too. There you I'm go. Jave. He's Andy. Josh Cash from Bad Flower. It's Two Dudes Reviews.